So I ended up getting a letter from EP Cube after I reviewed this system and they've sent me some information, maybe some things I might have had wrong or some things that they say is fixed and we can test that today. But uh, I just got a few things to go over that they sent me in this email. So the first one is they say that it does notify you now if there's a power outage as of like the end of June of this year, they added it to the user login on the app. Now the problem is I have not been logged in on the user login. I was logged in on the installer logged in. Now why would I be on that? It's because the installer can actually see the alarms and the errors on the system. When you're logged in as a user, you can't see those alarms. So that's why I was logged in as a installer. But now I am logged in as a user and in the settings there's a place where you can turn on um, an off-grid uh, state of charge notification. So I basically set it at 100%. If we're off-grid, anything below 100% it's supposed to notify me on this phone. So we're going to test that out first thing. So go ahead, we'll kill the grid power. See what happens. It blipped, transferred. That was actually a fairly quick blip. And now I'm going to wait and see if I get a notification. All right. I think that just took a couple minutes and I did. I've got an EP cube is in off grid mode and battery level has reached your alert value. So I did get a notification that the grid was out. So that is nice that that is now working. You just got to be logged in and your user account. See, I installed this all myself. So when you install it, you, you have an installer account so that you can actually configure the system and that you, you end up with two logins when you do it yourself. And I just need to log into the user account and it will tell me when it ends up being off grid. So that is that issue has been fixed. Um, so that's good to know. So one of the other things I mentioned in my video is that the AC to DC ratio, your solar panels to your AC output was two to one and that roughly it would be 15,200 15, watts of solar that this could take in. Now this actually, the solar amount varies with the batteries just the same as the inverter output does. So they sent me uh, the information here. So if you've got, I'll just go ahead and put it on the screen, but if you've got five or more batteries, you can handle the full 15,200 watts of solar. If you've got three or four batteries that drops down to a, a lower amount of solar that it can utilize on this system. As far as like the power blip that I was experiencing and, and uh, the transfer time, they said they're still working on that issue. I can attest to that it has improved uh, the, how it was last year. So it has gotten better and we just have to wait and see if they can get it to where it's, it's consistently doing a quick transfer. Now the other thing I brought up in the video was that when this is off grid that you can um, it discharges the batteries down to 15% and then it goes into what they're saying in this email as sleep mode and then it waits for sun to come out the next day. They said right now they are working on making that adjustable so that the customer can uh, adjust that somewhere between like maybe 5 and 30% and you can you know, tweak when it actually shuts off and waits for, for solar. So it looks like they're going to make that a user setting that you can, you can set. And that would be implemented in a future firmware update. Now I know a lot of people in the comments thought that the 15% was to save the battery charge and to not damage the batteries, but you can actually run these batteries down to 0% every day in self-consumption mode. I actually set mine to 0% and I ran it a few days to test it out and it'll run the battery all the way down to zero um, to maximize your solar savings so that you can use as much energy as you make. So the 15% that it, it turns off for sleep mode is not to save the batteries, it's just strictly to keep it awake. Now I haven't tested it to find out if you're below the 15% state of charge and the power goes out, I'm not for sure what happens. I haven't tested that. I'll have to do that in a future video to see how it reacts, to see if it just immediately goes to sleep mode. I'm going to suspect that it'll try to turn on a generator. It'll probably try to go for a few minutes to try to get a generator started. And then if that doesn't happen, my assumption is it would go to sleep mode. 
but this will let you run the battery down every day if you if you change the setting to that. And I personally, I run my battery on this system, I'm running it at a 30% minimum state of charge. And I just ran it at the 0% for a couple days to test it. And the other big thing they're working on is they wanna to try to change the Bluetooth in this to be able to give the app all of the information. Right now, when you Bluetooth from your phone to this, it's, it's strictly for setting up the configuration and the gateway. Um, they want to try to get the Bluetooth to actually send real-time data to the app so that you can sit here and monitor with that if the Wi-Fi or the internet is down. So it looks like they're going to try to add that in a future firmware update as well. And another thing they mentioned in their letter, they, they seem like they were keen to the idea of being able to use a manual generator with this and they said they're going to research it, look into it and see if that's something that they could add into the software to give it that ability. But anyway, I just wanted to sh share with you what EPCube sent me on this and some of their planned updates in that it will give you notification as long as you're logged in as a user, it'll give you a notification for when the grid's down. So hopefully we won't run our batteries out again like we did last time. But uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Uh, maybe I'll do some more testing on this in a later video, but uh, I think that's it guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.